my first question is, the last two seasons have end, ended pretty darkly. This last <laughs> one, particularly. Like, at least last season when it ended, I was like, okay, we're going to come back and we're going to win. This season when it ended, I was just wanted to cry. Like, <laughs> So, my question is... I would is, call how it effective do, storytelling. Yeah. <laughs> so, how do we come back from that? How do you give us a little bit of hope coming back into the new season? I think we, we, we know these these guys well enough at this point in terms of their characters on the show. These guys are never, you know, down down but not out. You would never count them out. And the, the odds that they're up against now, fairly significant. You've got a kind of a deity at this point uh, who opposes them, but uh, but I'm sure they got some, some tricks up their sleeve, yeah. Can we talk a little bit about the arc of the series in terms of surveillance? Because sure. it started out as being really about the problem of surveillance and AI, and now in this season it's really become about political corruption. I mean, yes, we're looking at surveillance, but we're also looking at throwing elections and thinking about how this is affecting us politically. Is that is that because you sense a shift in what people are afraid of? Like maybe they're less afraid of surveillance and <laughs> more afraid of political yeah. corruption? People brought that up a lot uh, to me about the surveillance. And a lot of shows have tried to jump in on that action. They saw it way ahead of the time, Jonah, they, they saw it long before it all happened. But what, what he does that none of them are getting is the relevant and irrelevant list. This is about whether or not, whatever's going on, whether you, you know, see people as uh, individuals, groups, or whatever have you. That's the difference between Samaritan and the machine and uh, our machine. The, 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 the fascist machine, the Samaritan sees us as a means to an end. These people are being used to keep us alive. That's it. And uh, the machine um, doesn't see us as a commodity. That, that we're that, 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 that the queen is in, as important as you know the pawn. And uh, um, so there is. You're more invested in this show than just to, you know the, the flat out people continue with technology. They use that as the background, but it's still the uh, the love, the characters, and the dilemmas that they have to deal with, whether or not we should. You know, knock off a POI, allow that to occur because we've got ten over here. You know, and and uh, and the moral dilemma between how he sees it and how I see it, which would cause for a huge drama. So Finch has really changed a lot in his kind of relationship with the machine, uh, culminating in that last moment where the machine is dying or running on double A battery, should we say? Um, can you press that? Kind of what is been your feeling with that? Do you like where it's going? Where do you think we're going to see it go? Future assuming the machine is still alive. I do like it. I think it's interesting. I, I, I think. Finch, despite himself, is drifting toward uh, giving the machine a kind of personhood or sentience. A a as much as he's always trying to draw the line between tools and humans, it's the line's kind of blurry now. Blurrier than I think he thought until that moment came upon him. So he has that to puzzle on as, as we move forward. And my, my guess is that, well, I don't know, I, 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 I think that, that business of the personhood of the machine, I, I think will get looked at again. So the machine that's in that suitcase, is it, has, it will it be the machine? Uh, could Wait, something there, have happened to it when it went in there? The, the way we, we, we sort of talked about it in the room is as if it was a strand, a strand of DNA that you would then have to kind of, you know, um, um, find a way to kind of rebuild out of the sort of essence of the thing, not the thing itself. So the early part of the season will involve Assuming these guys make it, because it looked pretty dire. <laughs> a lot of bullets. But assuming they make it, uh, there's a, a fresh challenge for Finch and Root in particular to, to 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 figure out how to rebuild the machine exactly. Give, given an opportunity, you know, if you could make God over again, would you make it yeah. a wrathful God? Would you Old Testament? How much Old Testament or New Testament would you dial into it? They get an opportunity to argue that out a little bit at the beginning of the season as they try to put this thing back together again. To, to wind it back quickly to Emily's question, um, you know, I think 
we've always wanted to consider the question of artificial intelligence and surveillance. And for me, the two things have always been bound, bound kind of hand in hand. Mm -hmm. um, we wanted to sort of watch that question in action, season to season. So you, you have the, the sort of first blush of, okay, here's the power of this thing. And then you watch, with now two of them, sort of an ecosystem begins to develop, how they compete with one another. And, and, and the really interesting part of what the show's always been about is how we interact with them. Uh, I got a lot, a lot of love for robots, doing a whole other show about robots, but the way we've always seen AI in this world, it always made more sense to me that we were the robots, right? That we would wind up working at their, at their behest. That your phone, you know, for now, we, you know, we ask our phone questions, but it, you know, it, it, every year the creep changes a little bit towards your phone telling you what to do. Uh, for now, it's your calendar telling you where to go, but then maybe it's suggesting a restaurant, or, you know, and, and, and the, the, the sort of tide turns a little bit. How that inter interacts with our political system, how that interacts with uh, is something we're fascinated by. You know, a story a couple of days ago about the the hack of an ongoing an ongoing hack has happened for years of the U.S. government system that contained the uh, security clearance application. If anyone here has ever done a security clearance application, um, it's every it's your whole life. It's all your friends, all your relatives. Whether you did drugs, or you, and this should be the most secure. You fill that application. Out with, the, with the, uh, the belief that the U.S. government will protect that document as carefully as it will all of them. The Chinese government has all of them. All of those applications for the last 15 years. So presumably the people who have the most sensitive jobs in our government. The most sensitive. So you start thinking about the ability of these systems, these automated, you know, the data, the ability of the data to push back on us, the form of corruption, the form of control. And that's something we're very very, very interested in with this season of, of PR. You know, you know, I have, uh, oh, last question. I have a question about this. That along that line, the, the question of the balance between surveillance and its misuse, and we're living that right now with um, how much is how much surveillance is enough to keep tags on the bad guys, and how much is too much for us to live our lives. I just heard this thing the other day, wrong is wrong, even if everybody's wrong. Right is right, even if nobody's right. That's interesting. Can I ask one quick question? Which is, yeah, okay. um, <laughs> Reese has, has, is kind of attached himself to Iris, and I wanted to know what you thought of the character how that how he sees that relationship versus Carter versus Jessica. How does he put that in his head? In which relationship? Iris. What kind of emotion is he attaching to Iris in comparison to the other two relationships? I think you go back to Jessica, the possibility that he could have a real relationship, second one with Carter, he missed it, and there's great fear there. Um, yeah, you blew that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I really had no, no say in the matter. <laughs> I think one of the questions, I mean, we, you know, we look at this season as, you know, this might be our last season. We hope not. But it might be, and so we're, we're, we're writing in that direction. We promised from the beginning with the pilot that this would not, uh, that this would probably end badly for many of our characters. But felt the hope along the way that maybe there'd be some redemption, maybe there'd be a shot of a normal life. And I think that tension will, will, will carry through the, through the season. Which of these guys makes that a lot? If we fight it up, you guys, let, let us know. <laughs>